Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Welcome to our awesome, powerful Sunday service. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. We're going to have a powerful time of fellowship now. We will have prayer, praise and worship, and a dynamic rhema word from the Lord. So I'm going to encourage everyone to touch their share button. Come on, share this service. It's good and it's a blessing to share good news, especially at such a time where we're being faced with so much trauma, pain. There's so much going on and it's important that we encourage ourselves and we encourage others. So I welcome you. Welcome you to Perfecting Dunamis UK this Sunday morning. And I thank all of our partners and viewers across the world because we have many that tune into us. And I want to welcome you all. We are one body in Christ. Welcome in the name of the Lord. We're going to have a brilliant time of praise and worship and a dynamic word of the Lord from our senior pastor, Dion Lamont. And before that, we are going to have a time of prayer. But I just want to enlighten everyone that during this time of lockdown, that we're not physically able to meet and fellowship, we are still very much fellowshipping and ministering online. And I thank God for technology. All those that wish to pay their tithes and offerings or sow a seed into the work of the Lord, because finance is very key, especially in these times where more costs have come up through online services, online outreach, reaching out to the poor, the needy with resources. So much finances have come up and we need your finances to help us. So you are able to sow your tithes and offerings and it could be even a special sacrificial seed that you want to give. The information will come on the screen. So please utilize that. Pray, ask God, what do you want me to give? God knows the needs and the challenges that we are facing as a ministry in these presidented times. So please sow and give with a willing heart and it will come back to you in good measure, pressed down and running over. Praise the Lord. Have you pressed that button yet? Come on, share this service, share this service, the blessing when you can share good news. We're going to have a time of prayer. We've had so many calls, so many requests, so many issues, a lot of pain, especially following the late George Floyd's murder. It's triggered so much anxiety and bad memories and experiences that others have experienced through the police. We've been inundated with calls and we're going to pray. You know, the Bible says that where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst and he is in the midst to bless us. Prayer changes things. So I want you to call your family, get the family here. And let us pray together and trust God that he will answer our prayers in Jesus name. 
Father, we come before your throne in the mighty name of Jesus. You said come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Heavenly Father, you are the God of all flesh and there's nothing that is too hard for you to do. Father, we lift ourselves before you. We lift the nations before you. We lift families before you. And we ask you, Holy Father, to pour out your spirit on all all flesh. Father, we're praying for your divine wisdom. Let your wisdom penetrate our minds, body, soul, and spirit. Father, we're praying for a word, a word, a word, a word that will break every chain and set every captive free. Father, we're praying for the spirit of healing, healing, healing to penetrate the hearts of your people. Let there be healing in the hearts of every man, woman, boy and girl in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are faced with so many challenges, but you said if we call on you in the day of trouble, you will answer us. Father God, we are calling on you this morning. We're calling on you that you can answer every prayer, answer every tear, answer every question, answer every groaning Lord. Sometimes we can't even utter in words what we are going through. But you said, Lord God, that our tears are a language that you understand. Father, we're praying that you will answer every tear, every prayer, every language, every groan. You will answer it, Lord God, and you will answer it by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you said that the world will know that we are your children by the love we have for one another. Father, we thank you for the love, for the charity which is being administrated right now, Lord God. The he, the pain, the needs of everyone that is being met right now. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that by your blood, Lord, where we cannot answer, that your blood will speak better things. Father, we pray for our leaders. Let the leaders, Lord God, that you have chosen rise up with a divine strength and an anointing that will penetrate the realms of the spirit and that will bring down low every demonic administration and forces against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you said, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and right now we bind the forces of darkness the evil spirits and demonic activities that is trying to rage chaos and pain and murder on our streets we bind that spirit we bind that stronghold in the mighty name of Jesus and we lose peace into our community we lose peace into the homes we lose healing against every sickness we pray Lord God for miracles let your miracle working power be released through every home in the mighty name of Jesus we decree and we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and no weapon formed against us shall prosper we cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus we cover our households in the blood of Jesus we cover our ministries in the blood of Jesus we cover our lands in the blood of Jesus we cover our possessions in the blood of Jesus we cover every realm of authority in the blood of Jesus we cover our pastors and our bishops and the leaders in the work of the ministry in the blood of Jesus we cover our members we cover the community in the blood of Jesus and we decree that none shall be lost in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said if we pray and we believe, we shall have which we have prayed. I want to encourage you in your faith, in your belief that God is a God that never fails. He is with us. He is for us and he loves us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Now we are going to enter into a time of praise and worship. And I want to encourage you to open your heart, open your spirit. For we know that when we bless the Lord with all our heart, hallelujah, the blessings and the fragrance of the Holy Spirit comes and resides with us. So I encourage you, lay aside every care right now as we enter into a time of praise and worship. And I want to welcome our very own minister, Trisha Bailey. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new Whatever lies before me, eh, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh, oh my soul, worship his holy name. I'll sing.
worship, I worship your holy name. Never before you worship your holy name, worship his holy name. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh, 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 thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to go into a time of feasting into the word of God. You know, the Bible says that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path without the word of God how can we live for the word of God is bread and meat and water to our lives hallelujah the word of God this morning will be delivered by our very own senior pastor, Dion Lamont. Before she ministers to us, I wanna encourage everyone to make sure you have a notepad and a pen because the revelations that I experience and we all experience coming from this woman of God, it's impossible for you to grasp everything. So you need to write it down. So without any further delay, let us welcome our very own senior pastor, Dion Lamont. Thank you, Minister Lorraine. Father, at the entrance of your word, there is light, there is information, there is illumination, there is change. Use me for your glory in the advancement of your kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ. As I mentioned last week, this is a part of a series, and they began, and they began. Please hear my heart this morning. I am unashamedly a born again child of God. I have been baptized in water in his name and I have the experience of the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And some of the things that I may be sharing with you today may be somewhat controversial, but Jesus was quite a controversial figure and that's okay. Let us reason together. Remember the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, cannot be limited to our organization, to our church, to our little prayer meetings. He is power for service. He is our enabler, our helper, our comforter, our paraclete. He who comes beside us. He who walks along with us. Therefore, I declare today, there will be an illumination. I hope that our hearts and our minds will be open today. For the Holy Ghost power indeed destroys yokes. Change is in the air. Shifting is taking place. Something is shifting in our cities, states and provinces and countries, our boroughs, wherever change is in the air. Change can either be volitional or it's going to be forced. I'm thinking of the British surgeon by the name of Sir Joseph Lester, who was resisted when he discovered antiseptic. Or Sir James Young Simpson, a Scottish doctor, when he tried to introduce chloroform was resisted. If we think of Nicholas Copernicus, who was uh, in the Renaissance era, an astronomer and a mathematician, how that he established that the planets orbited the sun rather than the earth, and he was resisted. It is undeniable that change is needed and ultimately will be resisted. 
But change is either volitional or forced. For instance, no matter how much anti-wrinkle cream or expensive that may be, the, the inevitable will happen. I'm just saying. Let us go to our assignment today from the Word of God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 1 and then we're going to drop down to verse 6 and 9 from where our assignment is situated. I'm reading from the King James Version, Genesis chapter 11. I'm reading verse 1 and then I will drop down to verse 6 to 9. Here beginneth the reading of God's word. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Verse six. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So far the text. Let's look at how another version renders it. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and they confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Let's look at Nimrod, the legacy of Nimrod, whose name means let us revolt. This is the legacy of Nimrod in a place that he called Babylu, which by the Hebrews is known as Babel, which means gate of the gods, from which we get balau, which means to confuse, to mingle, or to mix up. It was a place of revolution. It was the administrative center of his revolution against God. And thus we can see why some interpreters translate that word before in Genesis 10, 9. If we'll just look at that really quickly. Um, Genesis chapter 10 and verse 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. So some translate the word before in Genesis 10, 9 as against. Even though before is literally correct, Nimrod was standing before the Lord as an enemy. God's scattering of the builder's language reveals Nimrod's and therefore Babylon's attitude toward God. Let's consider Babylon. From this point, Babylon became a worldwide political, military, economic and religious system bearing the same basic attitudes as its founder. It can be a nation, Babylon, or a system, Babylonian. But its core characteristic is that it is against the Lord. Babylon became the Bible's code word for what its New Testament writers called the world, as they use the Greek term cosmos. 
It is an organized worldwide system that is opposed to God. Just as surely as Nimrod was opposed to God, Babylon is an organized worldwide system that is opposed to God. It is a culture that is anti-Christ, anti-God, and it is everywhere. God had to stop them. How? By confounding or confusing their language. How important is language? Academics who study language learn a lot about uh, a culture from the way people use words and the emotions that those words carry with them. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And wherever, whoever speaks it, whoever lives it, we reap the fruit thereof. The underlying meaning of words are called frames. And there is a professor of linguistics and cognitive science at the University of California in Berkeley by the name of George Lakoff. And he teaches that, uh, that every word we understand by its frame. He describes frames as mental structures that shape the way we see the world. As a result, they shape the goals we seek. They shape the plans we make. They shape the way we act and what counts as good or bad outcome. You can't see or hear frames. They're part of what cognitive scientists call the cognitive unconscious. These are structures that's in our brains that we cannot consciously access. And this is what the context shows in Genesis 11. The people scattered from the Tigris and the Euphrates Valley taking much of the antagonistic to God culture with them. And each language group adapted it to some degree to their ethnic traditions. Undoubtedly, each group altered it somewhat, but secular evidence reveals a common strain connecting all civilizations worldwide to the Tigris-Euphrates region. It is the womb of man's civilization. We see another time and place where God got involved in the revolution of language. And this is in Acts 2. Yes, it is in Acts 2 verse 4. And we will turn there really quickly. And I know you're praying. Bless the name of the Lord. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devote men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language language is more than words language is more than words mm. clothing is a language. Hairstyle is a language. We have body language because our eyes speak, our hands speak, our heart speaks. The word of God says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Women, you know that our hips speak. Yes, language is all around us and we need the Holy Spirit to speak through us and began they. We speak various languages every day. If you're a musician, you speak the language that uses codes and A flats and bars. At work, there may be a language of productivity, tasks, numbers and deadlines. Computers and mobile phones, too, have their own distinctive modes of communication. Driving on the road has its own language. Flashing your headlights could mean that someone ought to go. Or flashing your headlights could simply mean, what are you doing? How dare you go? We all switch between these frames of micro language. The church, too, has its own language that varies between denominations. Yes, there was a confounding of language. God confounded the language so that their plan to build that tower, that structure that would fly in the face of God, would not succeed. 
God had to act. Don't let them understand each other. Mm -hmm. When one asks for a brick, let them bring cement. And if one asks for a comb, let them bring a shovel. What a confusion. God confounded and confused their language. And when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost uh, and descended and birthed the church, that too was a revolutionary act. They began to speak with other tongues, which was not their native language, though they had never learned any other language. They did not speak about things that were commonly being discussed around Jerusalem at the time. They spoke the word of God as the spirit gave them utterance. Yes, notice the builders of Babel did not understand their own language. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language. The New King James Version says that they may not understand one another's speech. Oh, on that day of Pentecost, a very great miracle took place. It took place in the mind where words were revealed by the Holy Spirit. They had never learned this language before and they never learned any foreign language. Yes, which probably would have made it easier. Mm. But Peter was, was bold enough to speak in his own tongue. They weren't scholars or, 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 or university graduates. They weren't linguistics by any stretch of the imagination. They were unlearned and they were fishermen. But the Holy Spirit uh, came upon them. And Peter was bold enough to speak. Uh, but the rest of them, we know there were no spokesmen, common men, uneducated, mostly fishermen. They were not quick learners, but now they are changed. And it could be said of them, not only the heart of the rash understands knowledge, but the tongue of the stammerer is ready to speak eloquently. Isaiah 32 verse four. I remember when Moses complained, I am slow of speech. God said, I will be with thy mouth and Aaron shall be thy spokesman. But he did more for these messengers of his. He that made man's mouth made them new. I call for the Aarons of the day. Oh, how would they master the various language in order to speak intelligently to all nations? Because it would have taken them a lifetime to learn those languages. Therefore, the Holy Spirit had to descend upon them. Oh, yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I shall do, Ah, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We may be slow of speech, not savvy. We don't know how to navigate. Maybe some of us don't know how to navigate our way in a particular industry. But God said he will be with our mouth. He said an Aaron shall be the spokesperson. I'm calling for the Aarons of the day to be the spokespersons who will infiltrate the systems and declare, let my people go. After they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit influenced them, as the Spirit directed them. And these other tongues are not unknown tongues. Ah, there, there were many tongues spoken by Jews throughout the Roman Empire. And these worshippers had come from different areas of the Roman Empire for the Feast of Pentecost because all male Jews were required to come to Jerusalem for three of the feast. And they were in Jer Jerusalem because of that. And many of them couldn't speak the native language. These apostles were from Galilee. They couldn't speak all of these other languages, but they are speaking them now. The Spirit gave them utterance. Hang with me to respond to the nationalities of those that were present. After they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak the language of those who were around them. These other tongues are not unknown tongues. They were many languages spoken throughout uh, that region at the time. Uh, just like us today, there are many languages that is in our cultured regions, in our cities of influence, in our Athens and our Rome and our Paris and our Berlin and our Moscow, our London, Capitol Hill, New York, San Francisco, places of interest. 
information and influence. We must speak the language of this generation, the language of the systems, be it political. Learn the jargon, Aaron. Know the modus operandi of this generation. In order to make an impact, we need to speak their tongue, their dialect, and we have the power, the ability. If we are filled with the power of God, we cannot be satisfied just to speak in tongues in our prayer meetings and in our churches. No, those who are around in our cities must hear us speaking the language of the day. Usage of the words Brexit, vape, selfie, have all increased dramatically over the past few years. The way that I remember the use of wireless has changed. In the past, we listened to the wireless, but now it's most commonly used alongside words like broadband and internet, and who would want to have a tooth that is blue? But now we have Bluetooth. In scientific and medical parlance, mice are mated, injected, and modified. But now, in our general language, a mouse can scurry, squeak, or be clicked. Yes, zoom to mean uh, the lens of, of the camera, or it means that it, it, it was a fast moving object. Now it is where, how we communicate. Oh my God, you hear the words like landing page or mood board or retainer display. Yes, let the Aarons speak, Moses. I'm speaking to every Moses today. Let Aaron be the spokesperson. Yes, because they understand the language of the day. Moses may be slow in speech, but God said, I'm going to give you Aaron to be your mouthpiece. In law, the word like consideration is, is present or future. It's required in the formation of a contract. It means something in return. In finance, consideration has a monetary value. In banking, the loan amount is a consideration. In insurance, the insurance company may offer to make good on a loss, and that is called a consideration. And then they began. Oh, yes. In an appearance to his disciples, after his resurrection, Jesus declared, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues. Mark 16, 17. What is our new tongue? Are we equipped or being equipped to speak to the mountains of influence, to the mountains of information? Are we equipped to speak social media language? Oh, it's okay, Moses. Aaron will be the spokesperson. Are we learning the language? Let go, Moses, and allow Aaron to speak because your assignment is to lead. Oh, utterance to speak to a variety of communities, to various systems, to entities, to fraternities, to fraternities, and to challenge them or replace them. If we're going to affect change, we must learn to speak the language. Will somebody go ahead and praise the name of the Lord? Hallelujah to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm reminded of Daniel. Yes, when he was summoned to go to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said in Daniel 1 verse 4, he gave a specific kind of resume for who he wanted. He said, children in whom was no blemish, well favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability ah, in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. The language or the tongue of the Chaldeans was superior to any other nation, particularly in philosophy. They learned the other dialects and pronunciation that they might be more acceptable 
to the king and the court. We may have to lay aside sometimes our patois in order to go into the king's court. Oh yes, and to learn the language and the dialect and the pronunciation, oh yes, of those who dwell in the corridors of power. The language of the systems. It is not just enough to speak in tongues as a Pentecostal expression in our local fellowship. We've got to utilize the resources that God has provided and we must utilize them to their maximum potential. Come on, Aarons, maximize them to their maximum potential. I dare say we must infiltrate and penetrate the social, political and economic systems because I believe the church is a custodian of the answer the solution of today's societal issues. We must challenge and change our modus operandi. We cannot continue to be insular in our activities and in our mindsets. We cannot just continue to speak to our own West Indian Caribbean congregations. Oh my goodness, we have the Holy Spirit to make us bold, assertive and fearless. It is not just to have the jargon of Americanism in our services. It is more than a high five and a slap your neighbor upside the head and a turn to your neighbor. We've got to learn the language of the day so that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of the Lord and his Christ. The work of God in the world is so far so spiritual, is affected by human agency. The words in acting as faithful and true. Yes, yes, yes. It is placed within our hearts. Salvation by means of truth and love embodied in human language and human actions. The word becoming flesh in us. Ah, yes. Still relevant in this dispensation. And then they began. Because I reckon that the sufferings of this present time it's not worthy to be compared to the glory that should be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God, arise. Arise to the marketplace. Arise, shine thy light as come. Get into the arenas. Don't compromise, but represent. Represent with power and authority. Represent with integrity and confidence. Open your mouth and speak as the Holy Ghost gives you utterance. Speak. Black Lives Matter is speaking. Speak. LBGTQ is speaking. Speak. Extension Rebellion is speaking. Speak. For the Holy Spirit is giving you utterance. He is in you. Like if you drink a glass of water, the water is in you. But if you get into a swimming pool, you are in the water. Not only is the Spirit in you, ah, but he's got to be. You have got to be in him. So speak and let him test. The Holy Ghost is no longer just upon. Remember, he always existed during the time of the prophets. The word of God says the spirit of the Lord came upon. They had an upon experience. Now is living in me and living in you and living in us. The Holy Ghost power. Oh, it's moving throughout the world like a magnet. He's drawing people together and they're going up even when they don't know why. The Spirit of the Lord is acting as a catalyst and turning situations around. And when the Spirit of the Lord comes, not only does he confound the language, but we will speak the language that our communities will understand. Come on, Aaron, I challenge you. Come on, Moses, I challenge you to allow Aaron to come alongside you so we can speak the language of the day. And then when the Holy Ghost comes on the day of Pentecost, when it at fully come, there will be a descending of the fire of God and they will speak and they began to speak. And those who are from the regions, Cappadocia, our oh, Pontius, Perfilia, are oh, from Cappadocia to Galatia. They heard them speak in their own language. Are oh, we having the ability today to speak in the language of our communities rather than just 
some mumblings in our services. May God help us. I trust that you hear my heart this morning as we go out into this pandemic and as we go out into this protest, as we go into the revolution of the day, let us take the Holy Spirit with us and let him cause us to speak through us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us arise and go, sons of God, with fire and power in our hearts. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah.